Good evening, my name is Lynn Corrigan. Welcome to the Blue Mountain Public Library. The library's Arts and Cultural Council is a group of volunteers who organize monthly art exhibitions and presentations here in the gallery. Presently showing is Encore Art from the BVO Beaver Valley Outreach until November 30th. The next show is Celebrations 25 Artists for 25 Years, running through December 1st to January 30th. These shows are open to the public for browsing in the library and the art is for sale. Our next up and coming online presentation is Waterfalls of the Beaver Valley and Area by St Stu Hiltz. Watch out for the opening date. COVID-19 restrictions have caused us to reorganize in order to continue with our programs and shows, a challenge we are working through. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce our presenters on the Trans-Bhutan Trail. Lying between China and India, bordering with Tibet across the Himalayas, Bhutan is a landlocked country in South Asia that is a premier destination for high value tourism. The Bhutan Trail project will restore and reconnect the centuries old historic path that runs 430 kilometers through Bhutan. Catherine Smart and Stephen Couchman, aka Kathy and Steve, were invited by Bhutan Canada Foundation to manage the Bhutan Trail project for two years. They officially moved over to Bhutan last October and have since returned due to COVID-19. They are still very much engaged in the project from their Clarksburg residence. Kathy is a partner, mother, sailor, lover of outdoors, explorer, innovator, artist, facilitator, organizer, mediator, and creator. She has traveled and lived in many, many parts of the world. Steve, for many, more than 25 years, has been committed by making a difference in the social sector. He holds a BA in International Development and a Master's in Environmental Studies. He spends his free time in the outdoors supporting local environmental and community activities, blazing trails, and building bridges. They have been proud to call the Blue Mountains home for 18 years. Over to Steve and Kathy. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, and Kuzo Zampola. And Kuzo Zampola. Uh, we really, really, really are excited about this presentation and we're really sorry that we can't see all your beautiful faces. And um, however, um, we do, we believe we've got a fantastic story to tell. Um, really want to, uh, first of all, say thank you very much, Lynn, for inviting us and your committee. And to also thank Hannah from the library. Hannah has been amazing with organizing all the technology and all the logistics around this. I also wanted to just take a minute to introduce our colleague who is currently sitting in Timpu, Bhutan this very minute. He got up very early this morning to, uh, to join us. So Sonan Richin is um, uh, our colleague and um, the lead over in Timpu and um, has uh, graciously agreed to, to join us. And you'll be hearing lots from Sonam um, as we proceed through the um, presentation. So once again, thank you all for joining us and uh, we are going to carry on. So um, this, this slide that you're looking at, we really want to acknowledge our primary partners. So as uh, Lynn indicated, we have been, uh, we were contacted through, initially through Sam Blythe, who is the founder of the Bhutan Canada Foundation. We had a pre previous uh, connection with Sam, and um, he uh, thought that we would make um, a good team to uh, lead the charge from the Canadian side to get this trail uh, up and running again. And so um, we, the Bhutan Canada Foundation is certainly one of our key sponsors, as is um, the TCB, the Tourism Council of Bhutan. Um, we soon after arriving into Bhutan uh, developed a very strong relationship or a strong relationship and now it's very strong having had worked with them for mm. over a year. So um, we feel very grateful to uh, have um, those primary sponsors in place. Okay, so, um, so in terms of what we're looking at this evening, um, this just will give you an overview of things that you can look forward to. So uh, we have um, an overview of Bhutan, life and work in Bhutan, the trail team, which um, we'll be speaking to, the survey and the mapping of the ancient route, restoring the trail and what comes next. And then of course, there'll be an opportunity for all of you, should you have any questions, uh, to uh, we'll have some dialogue at the end of the presentation. 
So um, right now you're looking at uh, prayer flags. Oops, okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, great. Um, so uh, where is Bhutan located? I, I know that many people who I've spoken with over the time that we've been involved with, the, um, with uh, Bhutan um, wasn't quite sure where Bhutan was. And so um, it, Bhutan is, uh, well, you can see it is, China is above and um, uh, help me out, Steve. <laughs> let me, <laughs> India yeah, let me, is below. So yeah, I think as, as Lynn said, uh, China is between uh, Tibet uh, and India to the south. Uh, the country to the left or to the west is Nepal, and that's Bangladesh uh, to the south. So it's in the Himalayan range. Uh, there are five peaks over, or sorry, six peaks over 7,000 meters in Bhutan, all of them unclimbed. Um, and uh, the population is between uh, 760,000 and 800,000 uh, people. So it's a small population uh, through the mountains and um, the, uh, it's a little bit smaller than Switzerland. So what we wanted to do is just give you a little bit of a background uh, on uh, the nation, some of the things you might know about Bhutan and some of the things that are kind of important foundationally. I think the first, uh, the first thing is that um, it's important to understand is that we were uh, invited, the, the, this project that we were working on was the vision of His Majesty um, Bhutan is a constitutional monarchy. There's the, that's a picture of the royal family with their new baby, uh, just born recently. And uh, His Majesty, um, it was His Majesty's vision to, uh, to recreate this trail. Uh, the monarchy has been around since, uh, and Sonam, you're there, you can help me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, since about 1856. Um, and uh, His Majesty is referred to K-5, so he's the fifth king. Uh, His Majesty is 40 years old, and the constitutional democracy was, was introduced to Bhutan by his father um, in uh, 2008. So there is a parliament, um, and there, uh, there is um, elections every, Sonam, every five years. Oh, we're uh, we're muted right You're now. You're muted. Oh, yeah. we'll, we'll get to we'll get to you. So the picture down below that's Nation Day. Uh, so that's uh, um, uh, December the seventeenth. Each year is Nation Day, and so they have a big celebration uh, to celebrate the night nation. So the next thing you should know about Bhutan, which is very significant, is that it's carbon negative, and the importance of that is that it is one of uh, it is the only carbon negative country in the world, which means it sequesters more carbon than it produces by quite a bit. Uh, that's as a result partially of the hydropower, but it's in the constitution is mandated that 60% of Bhutan is forest covered at all times. Um, and that 51% of the country is actually protected land. Uh, so you can see in the bottom right hand corner there that's rhododendron forest in the springtime and all across the nation there are, there are deep forests and many many protected species so Bhutan is a uh, protectorate of numerous species including the black necked crane there are over a hundred individual Bengal tigers uh, in the country uh, roaming freely uh, the snow leopard of course um, uh, significant species, um, and the white-bellied heron, of which there are only uh, several do dozen left in the world. So Bhutan takes it very seriously uh, to protect species. When the, um, the forest fires were happening in Australia, based on the Buddhist uh, religion in, in Bhutan, uh, they, they, um, they made prayers for all sentient beings that were lost uh, in, the, in the bushfires in Bhutan. Uh, and just to reinforce that, the picture in the middle there is, is actually of the foreign minister uh, of foreground. Bhutan and the, in the foreground and uh, the director general of tourism. And they're out uh, for the day collecting garbage on the trail. So very, very active. The next thing you should uh, know about Bhutan is the concept, uh, many of you would be familiar with this, of gross national happiness. 
Um, and that is uh, once again introduced by uh, the fourth king of Bhutan. Uh, and it's taken quite seriously. So everything that happens in Bhutan is, is measured against uh, the happiness of the people. It's not necessarily to say that there, everybody is happy all the time, but happiness matters. And so you can see the different aspects of GNH there in the left-hand corner that are actually measured and managed on a regular basis um, uh, in the nation. So I, I think it's important to, kind of, to um, uh, and, and Sonam can give us a little bit more of an update on this, uh, but I think when the time comes to uh, analyze the impact of COVID-19 around the world, I think that uh, Bhutan will be uh, very much a case study on how uh, a small nation was able to do things uh, very well. Uh, so when COVID came in, uh, first of all, it, it was, uh, the country was well aware of the threat uh, before COVID and was preparing for the potential of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. Uh, and when the first case came, which was a tourist uh, from the United States, uh, they provided him with, an ex with extraordinary care. He was visited in the hospital by His Majesty uh, and he and his wife were well cared for. And as you can see, uh, they've done a very careful job of tracking COVID-19 cases in the country um, and taking care of those people who have. So if you arrived into Bhutan today, uh, you would go into a mandatory three week um, isolation uh, before you were allowed to go into the public. Uh, and you can also see there some significance the um, they also track all Bhutanese citizens outside of, um, of Bhutan as well and their well-being. Um, Sonam, do you have anything to add? Uh, uh, thank you, not much. Uh, I think you did well. Um, I think uh, Bhutan has been able to uh, contain this spread uh, of COVID right from the beginning when it started. I think it's uh, in March 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not only the government who is doing so much to fight against this, but also His Majesty uh, himself uh, has been traveling throughout the country uh, to ensure that uh, all the protocol uh, guidelines, uh, all the protocols uh, put in place mm -hmm. uh, are uh, followed. Uh, by every citizens and uh, every Bhutanese that comes in from outside, uh, all the quarantine uh, expenses are also met by the uh, government. And uh, as a result of the COVID, uh, the tourism industry is at a standstill uh, for the time being. Mm -hmm. And many receive a special allowance from His Majesty's uh, welfare scheme. And uh, now Bhutan seems to be doing very well in terms of its, uh, uh, you know, recovery. Uh, now it has dropped quite, quite low. I think it's about 22 uh, cases right now, mm -hmm. but and all, uh, with zero death. Mm -hmm. So we owe so much to our government and also His Majesty for really uh, taking care of its citizen. And uh, so far we are doing okay. Yeah, yeah. great. Thank there's you. a great there's a great story uh, when they introduced um, the curfew in uh, Timpu, which is the capital of Bhutan. Um, His Majesty went driving around after the curfew and he caught some teenagers having a bush party which I think is, I can just imagine those group of teenagers around the campfire <laughs> and His Majesty shows up. That's the definition of being royally busted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a little bit about Canada and Bhutan. So how did this, how did this happen? And I think the thing that, that many people don't know is that the relationship between Bhutan and Canada goes back for several generations. And, and you are unlikely to meet a person in Bhutan over the age um, of 40 who wasn't at some time or other taught by a Canadian teacher. This goes back to Father Mackey 
in the 1960s and, and really is considered the, he was a Canadian Jesuit and he's really considered to be the father of um, uh, modern day education in Bhutan. Uh, and so many people have such a warm feeling about Canada, either through uh, the, um, their experience uh, with their teachers or for the aid that was provided to Can from Canada over the years, uh, uh, fish, dried fish for uh, uh, food programs in the early days and so forth. <clears throat> so a long, a long and, and very special history. That's a picture of Kyla. Some of you may uh, recognize that t-shirt from the beaver crawl. Uh, and that's uh, a Canada Day tradition at Kyla's guest house in Boomtang. Which is in the center of the country. Yeah. Okay, so, so life in Bhutan. Uh, these are just a few images that uh, we wanted to share with you. And the, the middle image, um, the, the one of, of Steve and I together with the Buddha um, in the background, is when we first arrived into Bhutan and the Buddha is uh, located in, it's one of the wonderful tourist attractions in Timpu, which is where we live, the capital of Bhutan. And we were just messing around and having some fun, but it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful location. Um, an extraordinary Buddha. Um, and, uh, you know, um, was, uh, we actually um, had a view of the Buddha outside our, um, our apartment where we lived, which was wonderful. Um, we uh, traveled all throughout Bhutan and we have, um, there's uh, uh, the, the photographs on the left are of um, some images that we took when we were in Ha, which is at the most uh, western side of the country. And um, uh, there is the um, museum, which is on the, the right, the collage in the, of the, on the right hand side of um, a museum that's located just outside of um, Boomtang, which is in the center of the country, which is um, a, uh, an old uh, mansion that was um, turned into a museum by one of the family members. Um, and it's just, it's a stunning spot. You can actually go and stay overnight and you can have a meal there and what have you. So um, just, uh, we, we had, we were extraordinarily well received um, everywhere we went. Everybody who we were with was, it was really quite, and it is, I shouldn't say was, because we will go back at some point sooner than later, hopefully, um, uh, incredibly welcomed. Uh, so we felt like um, we, we feel very connected to the country. This is um, one of the first things we did. We had um, um, one of the, the women that we work with took us uh, on a tour and one of the places we went was the local market in Timpu. And it's probably one of the best markets I've ever been to or we've ever been to in our lives. Um, there's just all the produce is so fresh and so lush and the, the farmers come from the, the valleys outside of uh, uh, Timpu um, every week and um, sell, their, sell their produce and it's just we would go shopping every Saturday morning and it was just a huge delight because it's just so colorful as you can see and there's so many choices and it was um, a real treat. Um, so this just gives you an idea and then uh, Steve is actually, would well, you want to speak to that slide, the one of you? Sure, I'll talk a little bit more about it in, in a bit, yeah. but uh, the other, uh, I'm being served Ara uh, there, which is a, a locally brewed distilled uh, beverage, which um, uh, is, uh, is available mostly in the east, but uh, right across the, the nation. And, uh, uh, we're, you know, it's a, a, a very special beverage. You never know quite how strong Ara is. <clears throat> so. Yeah, every... Every R is a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. So um, here we are. And um, this was when I, uh, when Steve and I were first fitted for our national address. So the men wear uh, Go and the women wear Kira. And um, the woman who we were working with at the time was, you know, asking us to be Sears catalog models. So there we are. <laughs> It's very fun. And we're, this is before Sonam was actually hired and work, uh, working with us. But then the left uh, hand side of the page, you'll see us in our office. And this is when we, the Tourism Council of Bhutan very kindly um, donated office space for us. So uh, now there's uh, four, um, four folks, including Sonam, working in that office space. It's changed a wee bit. Um, but there were at one point, um, well, five or six of us in total. Um, so uh, 
uh, that just gives you an idea of some of the things that we do. And then these are um, other images. Um, oh my goodness, uh, where are we? Oh, this is in Paro. No, that's our the view from oh, our there's apartment. Oh, there's the view from our par apartment. Excuse me, yeah. So the, the one on the left-hand corner, uh, upper left-hand, um, is the view from our apartment. And then below that is me in one of the lovely guest houses along the trail. Some of the guest houses were really great and others were a little bit, um, as our kids would say, sketchy. Um, and then uh, the one on the uh, top right is, there's lots and lots and lots of dogs um, that um, run, there's a lot of dogs that run free and, um, and a lot of dogs are hungry. So I would have my little crew that I would feed on my way home from work. Mm -hmm. And then the, the bottom um, uh, photograph is actually in Boomtang and we're, we're walking, uh, trekking with a friend of ours that we met who um, actually trekked with a friend of Steve's father's many, many moons ago. It was a really nice reconnection. Um, so anyhow, wonderful, wonderful memories. The hospitality in Bhutan is extraordinary. As uh, we mentioned earlier, um, it's really a big part of celebrating life in Bhutan and um, you sit and you eat and you drink and you you share and you really enjoy and so these are some lovely images just depicting that yeah. and again um, so uh, here I am being fitted for my uh, my Kira the the photograph one of my most favorite photographs is the one with me and the girls um, we had gone to paradise to um, uh, not Piro, to uh, Taha, to ha, um, and uh, we met up with these beautiful Bhutanese little girls, and they were so fun, and they just trekked, trekked along with us, and we had a great time. Um, you can see that some of the bridges are um, a little bit, um, needing a little bit of attention, and there's Steve doing the deed, taking, taking one for the team. Um, the, the photograph below is uh, us celebrating Christmas in Bhutan um, in a in a um, a country that doesn't necessarily celebrate Christmas, so <laughs> that was a pretty fun time. And then on New Year's Day, we trekked up to um, we were in Paro and we trekked up to it's called Tiger's Nest, um, and it's a beautiful beautiful temple. Um, it's really quite extraordinary, and you can see how it's built right into the rock face. It was a really an extraordinary way to start the new year, even though this new year has been a little bit. Um, questionable in some ways, but really fantastic. Um, and uh, and then um, as far as like, there are so many occasions that are auspicious in Bhutan, but I have to say we we went to a number of them, and we had we were we were um, had the good fortune um, and very privileged to be invited to several amazing um, occasions. And so um, I believe this one was this was a um, uh, do you remember? I can't remember. Anyway, I, I'm, we went to, uh, help me out with yes. so, some of them. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know whether we want to go through. Oh yeah, we don't want to go through them all. Anyway, but, well, I can actually speak to the one on the right hand side. We were at National Day and that was a really, really, it was in Timpu and it was an incredible day and His Majesty spoke and actually announced that they were going to have another baby and did talk about, um, did, mentioned um, the trail in part of his, in his incredible speech, even though we don't speak the language um, we we got the essence and it was a really beautiful day and it was a very exciting time and the stadium which is right below where we lived was just absolutely packed it was so exciting um, so it's uh, it was it was really quite an extraordinary uh, uh, opportunity do you want to speak to oh actually Steve are you gonna do you want to intro this sure I'll do it I'll do a quick one and one of the auspicious occasions that you're able to go to on a regular basis in Bhutan is called a setchu which is a uh, a mask dance event and we just have a short video clip that we wanted Oops. to share with you Oops, that, that we lost there we go okay. let's see if I can get it back here I'm not sure if it's working for us no, let's see there we go yeah here we go. So that's a that's a setu, and um, it's uh, there are different setus held all over the nation, uh, and the da the dances um, 
uh, presented or of different uh, historic events and the life of Buddha and, and so forth. Sonam, do you want to add anything around the Sechu? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sechus are normally performed. Uh, uh, this is an annual event and we have about uh, 20 provinces or district we call it. So every district will have a unique kind of a festival uh, each year. And this is one of them somewhere, I don't know. But uh, the the Dochula uh, Sechu, yes. So if you go to different district, it's uh, it's it's a little different. Uh, even though Bhutan is such a small country, uh, uh, with so little population, uh, uh, we have quite a, a lot of uh, local dialects. About twenty-eight, just imagine, and also a distinct culture. Uh, based on their locations and all that. So this is one of them, uh, not very far from the capital city. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in Thimphu only. So mm -hmm. local festivals are uh, enjoyed because most of the farmers, they work so hard throughout the year. And this is the time they come together and celebrate, dance, drink, and make merry. So this is what is happening. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And yeah. uh, and just by way of a segue, the trend just behind uh, these dancers is uh, is where the the TBT the Trans Bhutan Trail runs. So I'm going to speak a little bit about uh, the the trail project. We've given you a sense of the the uh, the scope of the the uh, the trail and or, or what life is like in Bhutan, and we're going to move things along and just give you a sense of the trail. So we were there. Uh, working um, with Sonam and a group of others on developing the Trans Bhutan Trail from Ha in the west to Tashigang in the east. Total distance of the trail is 430 kilometers through nine Zonkags and 28 Giwags. And the, the east-west elevation is about uh, 20,000 meters uh, for the trail. Just quickly, the team, that's our, that's our core team, uh, Dasho Sonam, myself and Kathy, and then we have Pema, Tandon, and Jamyang. We also have a steering committee that we've been working with. So the steering committee represents all sorts of, all different groups from civil society organizations and governments in Bhutan, and our staff team, and of course, Bhutan Canada Foundation, which is quite actively involved in the trail as well. We also on the ground, I mentioned the 28 Giwogs. Uh, Giwogs are sort of uh, uh, um, the equivalent um, in Canadian terms uh, to municipalities. Uh, so in the 28 municipalities across, there are GUPs who are the, I guess, the equivalent to a mayor. Mm -hmm. And so we had working relationships with each one of those uh, GUPs. And then we had the ground team. Um, we had uh, working with over 700 people, mostly who had been displaced due to COVID-19 and they had lost their work. Um, and the desoup, and as a desoup yourself, um, Sonam, I'm going to yeah. hand it over to you. If you could describe the desoup and then uh, we're going to move on from, from there. Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, desoup is a voluntary uh, service group. Uh, these members are trained. Uh, by the government. Uh, of course, this is uh, His Majesty's initiative. They are called the Guardian of Peace. So they are not armed uh, sort of uh, people. Uh, they just volunteer uh, during time of crisis, during time of uh, natural disaster. So this time during the COVID, I think the, this group of volunteers called Desu, uh, really made a difference. They were able to not only um, provide, uh, undertake patrolling services, but also they went to the south of Bhutan, south of the country, and guarded the border with India, because we have a very open and porous border with the uh, Indian state. So it's it would have been really difficult. Uh, uh, for Bhutan to contain this uh, spread from Indian side. But these volunteers were uh, 
the one who actually are guarding the borders at this time. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we are doing the trail survey, they were the one who helped us to undertake the survey along with some uh, surveyors from the government. So the guardian of peace not only uh, guards the uh, nation against any threat or diseases, but they also do a lot of volunteer service within the country. And our project uh, was very lucky to have their services. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm sure Steve will talk about the survey that has been undertaken. Uh, can, I just, can, I, can I just say one thing? I just, can you flip back to the other slide? Sorry, I just want to be, I just want to be clear that, so the Dasup are all the people who are in the orange outfits. Those, those people are the Dasup, just to be really clear. And, uh, and Sonam, Dasho Sonam is a Dasup. Well. Yes, I myself, I can only wear this, this is the badge we get. And if you are not a trained Dasup, you will not be allowed to wear this uh, badge. And that so, is of His Majesty, correct? Yes, His Majesty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to hand it over to Sonam to, to give us a little bit of the history, why the trail is important. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the survey. Um, thank you. Well, as Steve said, um, uh, the Trans-Bhutan Trail, uh, it's a very ancient trail, but it has never been used for so many decades, uh, ever since the motor road was constructed in Bhutan in 60s. So we almost lost a piece of culture uh, because it was not used for such a long time. A and now uh, we realized that uh, we need to revive this uh, uh, piece of culture and bring back to life. So that's why the uh, Trans-Bhutan Trail project was launched uh, with the help of Bhutan Canada Foundation. Uh, of course, we are very fortunate that uh, the Bhutan Canada Foundation was able to, is able to support us, provide us seed funding. And uh, right now the project is still on. Uh, we are about to finish the renovation of 430 kilometers of uh, trail from east to west. Um, Bhutan may not be a country actually today if we did not have this Trans-Bhutan Trail then. Um, as you have seen in the map, Bhutan is a small tiny country between India and China, uh, two big countries. Uh, and uh, Bhutan was attacked by Tibet from the north 13 times and British India from the south for uh, some times. But because of the resilient uh, of our people and also with the help of the uh, Zongs, Zongs, something I'll explain later, it's a highly fortified uh, fortresses. Uh, and also our trail, trans Trail has served as the national highway those days. It's not a motor road, it's a trail, but it has served the purpose of protecting uh, our country from the enemies. Uh, and also it has been, uh, it is used as a conduit uh, from east to west, sending messages from Zong to Zong. As you can see, Zong, is a highly fortified building uh, which is built traditionally without using any modern technology. And these zones are built in such a position, either it is on a top of the hill or it's between two rivers so that they can protect themselves and defend themselves from the enemies. So the zone as well as the trail itself has, has helped Bhutan to, to isolate itself in any way and also defend itself from the enemies. And we never lost our sovereignty till now. So that's why the uh, Trans-Bhutan project intends to revive this 
ancient trail and educate our younger generation uh, the uh, piece of our culture. Mm -hmm. And also we hope that the, the, uh, uh, the transport and trail, once it is restored, will go a long way in helping our communities living along the trails and we hope that their economic life will be raised as we start using the trail. It's not only for domestic purpose, but also we, in, we, we, we welcome uh, hikers, bikers from all around the world. And by 2021, our trail will be ready. And we hope that uh, many will uh, come and uh, take a trip through this transport and trail. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, but we are very grateful, Bhutan is very grateful to the so many kind donors from Canada. Uh, we have been able to provide employment at this very trying times in Bhutan by engaging our local communities to rebuild and to renovate the trail. Mm -hmm. So we continue to receive donations uh, through Bhutan Canada Foundation from our uh, uh, donors from Canada. And we are happy that uh, we are able to revive, not only revive our trail, but also uh, we s it's expected that once the trail is uh, in, uh, put, put in good shape, uh, so many communities are going to benefit from this uh, project. Yeah. So I would like to thank Canada once again for supporting us. And we also look forward, of course, uh, that uh, we receive uh, the kind support in future. Mm -hmm. I was explaining about the zone. Zhong is, as you see, Zhongs are very old. Uh, it was mainly built in 17th century. But before that, of course, there were also Zhongs. But those were used to house monk bodies, mainly, and also to uh, use as administrative office. But, but later, so many uh, local penlops, we call it, local uh, chieftains, uh, local feudal heads. That time there was no king as such. Everybody had their own power within their own region, you know, small, small uh, districts. Uh, but there are a lot of conflicts within themselves. But a Tibetan Lama came from Tibet and he unified Bhutan actually to some extent. And then the Zong was gradually used as a fortress, as a, uh, uh, as a store, storage for ammunition, you know. So Zongs have really play, played a very uh, uh, great deal of uh, uh, part in protecting Bhutan and also it's symbolic uh, in terms of unification and central authority uh, in Bhutan. So yeah. this is something I would, unless Steve, would, would you like to add some? Oh, I just, just to say that we're very, and I know you would never say yourself, but if you look at the picture in the, in the bottom left-hand corner, um, that's uh, Trongsa Zong, Zongda, or Zong, sorry. Zong. And uh, that is uh, Dasho Sonam's old office. Uh, so he was, the, he was the Zongda, he was the head of that region. And um, so you imagine, um, going to work every day in, in such a building as that. And I would give the challenge, I'm not sure if there's still a Lego club <laughs> at, uh, at the library, but I think it would be a great challenge uh, for them to, uh, to take on something, something like this. So I'm, I'm a little bit sensitive to, to people's time. I know uh, 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 some of you are taking a break from the crown right now in order to watch this. So I'm gonna move our presentation along I'll just say very quickly, we've talked about many of these things already um, and just what the, the trail is about uh, and also what our achievements have been to date. Um, so uh, we'll show you some pictures in a few minutes about the clearing of the trail and the workers uh, online and so forth.
So we're gonna take you on a little bit of a journey right now. Uh, this is uh, some images from the start of the uh, survey that we took uh, in the end of March, beginning of April. And I think if it had been a few days later, whoops, I missed it, uh, we would probably not have been able to go. So we left uh, Tashigang uh, because, of, because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, so we left Tashigang at the uh, end, of, uh, end of March, beginning of April and began a survey. We had one team that left from Tashigang and another one that left uh, from Ha in the west. Tashigang is in the east, Ha is in the west. And Trongsa uh, is a significant site because it's right in the middle of the country. So we spent, uh, the team spent 14 days traveling across the country uh, to meet in Trongsa. So here's a picture of the team that, that, that I was leading on the left-hand side and our surveyors. And down below, it's hard to read, but that is basically the cross section of the trail, 430 kilometers across <clears throat> uh the nation and uh just to give you a sense of perspective uh if you look on the right hand side there about a, about three quarters of the way along there's quite a deep valley there um and uh, that valley has a depth a vertical depth of over two kilometers uh so i mentioned the twenty thousand meter vertical uh, it, to walk the whole Trans-Bhutan Trail is equivalent to climbing Mount Everest five and a half times uh, going across the country. So here's the, here's the team. Our job was to GPS survey the trail uh, uh, to identify where the old route was, where it has fallen into disuse, uh, to do some initial clearing, and uh, we'll see in a minute to, to look at some historic sites. So one of the things about these two images, just quickly, is that the image on the left and the image on the right uh, are within a day's walk of each other. So in the left, we are in subtropical subtrop rhododendron jungle forest. That's a canopy collapse in the, in the middle of the trail they're trying to do a little clearing on. And the picture on the right is Strimshing La Pass, about three kilometers, <coughs> three kilometers vertical. Uh, from there where there's still snow on the ground. So needless to say, uh, it is not, it, at the time we did it, it's not a trail for the, the faint of heart. Uh, there were uh, long days. Uh, there were some fairly treacherous rivers to cross. Uh, you can see the day soup there um, moving, the, moving logs out of the way uh, on the trail. Where we could, we began the clearing process and marking the way. And as Kathy has so aptly mentioned already, the hospitality was extraordinary. Uh, on the first day after we left Tashigang, uh, we had six, uh, uh, six small villages, communities that we went through. Understand that, that this is the first time this trail has been walked in a generation. And local people were very excited uh, about uh, our group and the, um, the effort that we were making. Uh, so they came out. Uh, and they provided us with tea and snacks, uh, with uh, Aura, um, as we've talked about earlier, and a drink called Suja, which is uh, a butter tea. So it's tea uh, made with butter and salt. Um, and it is uh, very good for uh, getting you up steep hills. And between the two of them, I'd say that uh, Suja and Ara is like the Red Bull and vodka of Bhutan. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it gets you up the mountain and it kills the pain on the way. So along the way, we were also um, doing our best to identify um, historic sites. Uh, so we logged uh, over 400 significant cultural sites uh, that are along the trail. Um, these steps on the right-hand side uh, are you know obviously uh, long from a long time ago and and uh, Dashosonam is there at Zonker Zong uh, and it's a, it's a ruined zong uh, near Linmatang in Sailing uh, in Mongar uh, and this and the, very quickly the story of that zong uh, is that the it's it it's quite quite a bit like Machu Picchu uh, when you look at it it's quite an expansive structure. 
Uh, and um, the story is that the architect, after building the Zong, uh, the Penelope, the, uh, the commander of the Zong, didn't want him going off to build anybody else's Zong. Uh, so he drowned him in a nearby river. Uh, but just before he died, as Buddhists, they believe in uh, reincarnation. There's a belief in reincarnation. So he said he wanted to come back as a giant snake uh, and haunt the Zong. And so it's not a place that you spend a lot of time at um, because of, of uh, the, the omens of that place. Um, uh, but it is a, it is a, good, a good lesson to, to, to keep in mind. And of course, the vistas uh, connecting with uh, local elders uh, in the communities along the way, um, uh, learning the stories of the of the local deities of the spirits, um, and and experiencing the the incredible landscape. Uh, this uh, picture on the right is Dobshuri in the Paro Valley, um, and this is uh, early spring, so they are flooding the rice uh, the the fields the paddy fields for rice. And the crew liked to have a little bit of fun along the way. Yenton was very keen to learn how to snowboard. Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't think he had the wax quite right, uh, but uh, gave it a try anyways. And uh, there's some of the crew uh, in the hot stone baths, uh, which is a, um, when, you go, when you go to Bhutan, you'll have to take an opportunity to try a hot stone bath. So the completion of the survey uh, was in Trongsa. Um, as we said, they recognize it from before, and it was quite a celebration. It was a little bit lower key than we had planned uh, because of uh, the COVID, but we did uh, have, a, have a chance to have a little bit of a celebration at Chongsa. And I'll show you a little bit of a video clip. Whoops, if I can. Let's see here if I can show you this. Sonam, did you want to say anything about the the uh, yeah. Finnish in Tonksa and your words there? Oh yes, uh, I think uh, uh, we just finished, concluded the survey. Uh, one team started from the east, one from the west, as Steve said. And Trongsa is the place, that's the center of Bhutan, actually. So we, the two teams met. It was a GPS survey. So we entered the fortress. One coming from the west entered from the south side. The one coming from the east entered from the north gate. So this is the zone which is very important in Bhutan's history because this is from where the first king has controlled the eastern part of Bhutan. He did not allow anybody encroaching uh, uh, towards the west and also he controlled west from here. This is the center. So in those days when there was no motor road, once you reach Trongsa, whether you're coming from the east or west, there are no other routes, but you have to enter through the zone only, mm -hmm. through the courtyard. Mm -hmm. So what we did on that day in March, this, this year, when we did the survey, we entered from the two gates, from north and south, and the two teams met and exchanged the GPS equipment inside the courtyard. Of course, now, these days we do not walk through the zone because we have roads built everywhere. But now, once we revive the trail, anybody who is trail uh, who is hiking will have to go through the zone only. That if you if you are walking, so this is very symbolic, very historic. Mm -hmm. We have just been able to do a thorough survey, and we are celebrating the end of the survey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Lovely. So we moved immediately on from there to the restoration of the trail. Uh, and this is where the, uh, the I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the GUPs uh, from each Giwogs, the leaders from each Giwog uh, came into play. So we made arrangements with them 
uh, to begin work on restoration of the trail. And we uh, benefited greatly. The Royal Government of Bhutan uh, contributed over uh, 20 million neutrum, which is in the range of $300,000 Canadian uh, towards the restoration uh, process of the trail. And as a result, um, there are about 50,000 tourism workers directly involved in tourism who have uh, lost employment um, because of COVID-19. Um, and so many of those, um, there are many projects underway in Bhutan, agricultural projects, retraining projects uh, to keep them occupied. And the trail was one and we had uh, over 700 uh, people working on the trail. So here are some images uh, from that trail work. This project was taken on by Trongsa. So this is just below the Zong uh, in Trongsa. This is the bridge, uh, the, the traditional um, uh, basm across the river. Um, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful structure. It was restored as part of uh, the, the project. So the trail crosses this bridge. Uh, the, it's, it looks lovely, but it has a very practical purpose. In monsoon season, things rot very quickly. So you, wanna, you want to have a roof over it to protect it. And historically, it was also a defensive position. So you would have a garrison in the, uh, located in the, in the bridge. And you would also have a runner who would go back up to the Zong. If somebody approached, uh, they would not get there by surprise. The, uh, the work teams were extraordinary. Um, the level of work I, I would love um, having, as a, as a Kalapur Trails volunteer, mm -hmm. I would love to bring a crew over uh, to work on some of the things here. Just as an example of the pride of workmanship of the trail, our, spec, our specs called for a bridge to be built across this particular river. Um, and um, when we were underway, I, you know, I just imagined a very basic bridge. Um, and then this extraordinary structure appeared, uh, beautifully built, uh, probably out of, I uh, imagine that's hardwood uh, structure and, uh, and painted. So there's a, a great sense of local pride um, in each one of the communities in which the, the, the work is underway. We also refurbished several suspension bridges uh, on the trail. Uh, these were originally constructed by uh, Swiss development, but as you can see on the right, have fallen into disrepair and were not usable anymore. Uh, so uh, Dasho Pema, who is one of our colleagues, uh, is there uh, helping with the cement work. And uh, you can see the result of that work. So in addition to being a wonderful trail to hike, uh, it's also being used now by local villagers to move their cattle, um, so it, it, it provides benefit uh, to local people as well. Yep, I'm getting stuck here. Hmm. I think Pema's, uh, Pema's at work. Oh, I've lost it. Sorry, everyone. So, uh, Kath, maybe you could talk, I think that was towards the end of the thing, maybe you can talk a little bit about next steps while I'm catching this up. Okay. Um, so, uh, as Dash Osnanam indicated, we are pretty close to completing the, uh, the trail. Um, we have hired the, uh, the um, woman on the left is interviewing an elder and she's our researcher, so she's going to be compiling a number of of stories of um, elders and, and what the trail was like prior to uh, the national highway being put in place. And then I've been managing the communications and marketing piece. That's one of the many things I've been doing in support of this initiative. And um, we put together a passport, um, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I think it's a, a fantastic communications and marketing tool so that anyone um, who comes and treks the trans Bhutan Trail will receive a passport, which is the little green um, uh, deal that you, you can see there, um, that the that our colleague our uh, Jam Yang and um, the uh, one of the ambassadors is holding, um, and the intention is, of course, is to get your passport stamped all along the trail. It's a great it's a great um, 
um, piece of memorabilia, a souvenir, and um, and it's and also tells a really fantastic story. So uh, we're working diligently on putting that program together. Um, so you can see here um, finishing up the trail work, blazing GPS routes, the launch of the website, which we're we're uh, striving to get the website launched by towards the end of December and. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we've just got a, a few checks and balances that need to be uh, put in place before we do that, but that's the intention. We are really focusing on um, promoting the domestic market right now, given the uh, current state of affairs in the world. And then we are undertaking an international marketing program. Um, we've had many, many conversations about that. So there is a plan that's currently being put in place. Uh, Steve and uh, Dasha Sonam have been working uh, diligently putting together the pieces that would take a commemorative walk, which hopefully will be attended by His Majesty along with other dignitaries, and a scout walk. The scouts, the scout um, uh, group crew is, is uh, alive, very much alive and well in Bhutan, and it's an incredible opportunity for scouts to spend time on the trail to help with the with the um, uh, ongoing maintenance and uh, and to tell the stories. Um, and then um, we also have, um, uh, we're working with uh, the, um, uh, the Royal Secretariat to um, assist with what's called the Gelsung program. So it's a, it's a rite of passage program after the um, high school students complete their um, high school, their final year, they, they automatically go into this program for a full year. And part of it, part of their program will be to spend time on the trail, um, participate in community service, and um, you know, assist with, again, with various aspects of promoting the trail and taking care of the trail. Um, so that's very exciting for the Transportan Trail program. And then of course, any good program needs a sustainability plan. So we've been working on pulling together all the pieces that it takes to ensure that all this fantastic work and all this energy that's gone into the development of the, or, or rejuvenation of the Transportation Trail stays in place for many, 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 many years to come well, well after I leave this planet. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a really, really important step. And of course that includes all aspects as well as, you know, a funding, a funding initiative as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is um, just a piece that uh, you know it really emphasizes the good work um, and that we're being noticed, um, which is really exciting. We, we're being noticed far and wide. And this was a tweet that um, uh, it's it's Bhutan's ambassador to the United Nations, right? Uh, put out just uh, just reflecting on how important this relationship is, the ongoing relationship be between Bhutan and Canada and that work we're doing together uh, on, this, on this trail. And I think we're coming to, uh, to a close and I'm hoping that we have a few minutes for uh, some questions uh, at the end. Before we do, we've uh, provided uh, some, some resources. Um, very much encourage you to follow us. Uh, in, uh, on like us. Like us, <laughs> like us, follow us. Please like us, like please us. like us. <laughs> um, uh, on Facebook and uh, contact us if you would. There's also some references there. There's a quite an excellent uh, TED talk by the former prime minister of Bhutan, Siring Tobge. Uh, I really encourage you to watch that if you get a chance. And there's a couple of um, uh, books there, including one by a uh, local, so, some of you will know Ken Haig, who is the head librarian in Collingwood. Uh, and uh, he wrote, he spent time as a teacher in Bhutan and wrote quite an excellent book. Uh, and Luna Lack, Yak in the Classroom is a is a, a recent film and it's up for an Academy Award right now. So well you can, worth it. You can, uh, well worth it. Mm -hmm. uh, and underlying all that, if anybody would like to come walk with us in Bhutan, uh, please let us know. We would love to, uh, we would love to see you out on the trail. It, uh, it probably is, it's certainly one of the most extraordinary experiences of our lives to work with such exceptional people such as Dasha Sona. So thank yeah. you all very much. Tashi Dalek. Tashi Dalek. So we, we are um, more than happy to uh, answer questions. And I know Dasha Sona would, would, uh, would, is here to do the same. So um, Hannah, if you wanted to help facilitate that. Yeah, no problem. So the way that we are going to be running our Q&A for tonight is under participants, if you go to the bottom of your screen, 
you'll be able to raise your hand. We're gonna take questions that way. Once you raise your hand, we'll find you. I'll be able to unmute you and then you can go ahead and ask your question. And of course, if you're having any problems with your microphone, feel free to message us right in the chat and we'll take questions that way as well. So if anybody has any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. There you are. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> it's not really a question. I just want to thank Catherine, Stephen, and Sam for the enchanting presentation. We really enjoyed it. It's better than you can find on national television or Netflix. And just two, maybe two questions for Stephen. Number one, under the uh, the um, title where you had uh, trail restoration, I don't know how you carried that rock. <laughs> we want you at Kalapur this Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> and I think, other question, do you bring the air home with you? Because I'd like to share a glass with you. Yes, yeah, Rick, good to hear your voice. Yeah, no, it'd be great to see you. Um, yeah, no, that was not a picture of me carrying that rock. <laughs> oh, no. I cannot believe the, uh, the strength. And, and uh, you know, there's so many, um, so many stories I could tell. How the, one of our uh, older guides who was, uh, he, he walked the trail in his rubber boots for all day long. And I thought, my with bare feet and my feet would have been raw and at one point his feet got a little uncomfortable so he threw some sand down in his boots <laughs> to, to kind of do a little bit more padding just like i tell you something uh and i I'm, i think uh sonam will be okay with me saying this the uh, bhutanese are some of the toughest people i have ever met in my life uh they uh, it is not an easy uh place to live and um they are strong, they are incredibly resilient, and they're very much uh, community-focused um, folks. So, yeah, any day, any day. Looking forward to it. I'll be out brush cutting tomorrow, by the way. Okay, we'll be out blazing tomorrow, too. Thank you for sharing. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. All right, thank you, Rick. I'm just going to go over to uh, Bob, who also has his hand up. I'm just going to ask you to unmute. Once you unmute, you can go ahead and ask your question. Can you hear me okay? Uh, <laughs> can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah. Now we can, Bob. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so first of all, just thank you for doing this. This is a spectacular presentation, and it's so good to catch up with the wonderful work that you've been doing and you've been involved in in this amazing country. Uh, I have two questions. One is, um, when are you hoping to get back? And secondly, can you comment on the um, spiritual significance of this trail? Uh, for Bhutanese people and for anybody who actually went to walk up? No. Um, yeah, I mean, I think there, we learned a great uh, lesson in Bhutan, which is the concept of impermanence. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of deeply embedded in the culture uh, there. So getting back is going to be a, uh, an interesting exercise. Uh, we're hoping to get back um, in the new year, uh, I, and for my part, ideally, it would be sometime in the winter. The world is such a, a strange place right now. Um, it's, it's hard to say. And uh, we, uh, the trail is in very good hands. Um, and, but we do want to get back, certainly in 2021, as soon as we possibly can. So quick answer to that. Um, the um, part of the first part of the trail that the section at least i believe from timpu to uh just entering chongsa uh is referred to as the divine madman trail uh the divine madman was guru rinpoche um who is one of the founders of bhutan and so it traces his journey um across bhutan and there are various sites along the way uh that are related uh to guru rinpoche I think that, um, and uh, maybe Sonam, you could say a few words on this, but for my part, I have never been in a place uh, where landscape and, uh, or spirituality is so embedded in the landscape. So um, uh, trees have meaning, uh, trees have, uh, rocks have meaning. They were clearing the trail. There's some big rocks. And McCrew said, now we can't move those rocks. And I was like, why not? Uh, well, because there's a demon underneath them. It's like, okay, good. We're, we're not <laughs> moving those rocks. Um, you know, so, um, you know, and, and, and that's, that's just the natural landscape. And then as you can see, uh, there, in addition to the Zongs, 
Uh, there are chortons, there are prayer, prayer wheels, there are prayer flags all the way along. It's, it's an important spiritual journey as well. Sonam, I don't know whether you have anything to add to that. Uh, thank you, yeah. Uh, uh, I think uh, along the Transputan Trail, uh, which is about 430 kilometers, uh, along the trails, there are many, many cultural sites, very significant in, in terms of religion, and uh, spiritually, I think we have such a rich uh, trail. Uh, and as Steve said, we have uh, a person who is documenting, interviewing locals, visiting the sites, taking pictures, and as all is being recorded and we'll be uploading to our, on our website once it is launched. Mm -hmm. uh, due to COVID-19, uh, Bhutanese found out that we do not have to go outside of Bhutan for pilgrimage. Mm -hmm. And we can't go out right now. So what happened to us, what's happening is Bhutanese are traveling within our own country and finding lots of cultural sites. Of mm -hmm. course, people have been doing pilgrimage within the country, but not as much uh, as now it's happening. So we found out that in a way it's good for us now because of uh, the restrictions to go out. Bhutanese people are able to undertake pilgrimage this year. Uh, so many are traveling within the country and finding a lot of uh, landmarks, cultural sites. We call it Ne. As Steve said, so many saints were in Bhutan, uh, mm -hmm. Buddhist saints who have come from Tibet, and from other parts of the world, and who spent time in Bhutan. And so everything has a significance, spiritual significance and importance, like the river, the trees, uh, the rocks, you know. So it's, it's a, a, we are looking forward to a rich documentation of all these places, and we are going to upload on our website soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have one more question that is from George. I'm just gonna ask you to unmute and you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the excellent uh, presentation. Um, that's okay. Um, I have uh, one question I think I probably missed it right at the beginning. Uh, how did you initiate this uh, adventure in the first place? Uh, and the second one, and, and it's uh, not to belittle how spectacular and, and the religious impact uh, and the spiritual impact, I think uh, many of us are feeling that we can't go out of here in our area here. Uh, not quite the same, but I'm really curious as to what prompted Catherine and Stephen to, to, uh, to start this venture well, in the first place. Well, um we were asked and uh and the time in our lives uh was uh it, the time in our lives was uh the right time it was a timely um point in our lives um to pick literally turn our lives upside down and move to the other side of the world that's exactly what we did um sam blythe who uh many moons ago started Blythe academy and 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 very and and about 10 years ago 10 12 years ago started the bhutan canada foundation we've known sam for many years through um, other other um, uh, situations uh, mostly work and um, he uh, approached steve initially and thought that we would be a good team um, and that was about two years ago actually it was around two years two years this month and um, at the time, um, due to family obligations, it, the timing wasn't right for us. And then things shifted in our family. So to the point where we reconsidered and we were really starting to engage in very serious conversation. We have two sons and we went and asked them permission and they said, yes, they said the time was right. <laughs> and so we're a pretty adventurous couple and um, really, and, and do have the skill sets and really wanted to, um, take this on. We really, obviously, number one, we really believed in the uh, in the project, and uh, and so um, that's how we got involved. And uh, I, I I would have to say there's there's no regrets. It's been quite. It's as Steve said earlier on. It's been quite humbling. It's quite an honor, 
and we are really looking forward to getting back to uh, to Bhutan. Um, so it's uh, that, yeah, and it hasn't. I mean, this has not gone to plan. I don't, and I don't no. don't think I'm any different from anybody else that's out there right now. Um, that life, you know, the plan was to pack up our home uh, and leave um, uh, Thornbury, Clarksburg for three years, um, and and go off and do this thing. Um, we were separated for almost six months uh, because of COVID. Kathy got stuck in Canada. I was uh, stuck in Bhutan. And, um, and we made the best of it. And I think under the circumstances, there's, there's some lessons to be learned from the, from the fine people of Bhutan is just, you know, working together, making the best of it, um, and getting out and going for COVID-free walks uh, when you can um, is, uh, is the best we can do right now, so. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. All right, I have uh, one more question that is left uh, in the chat. It's actually a couple questions, but I think they all go together really well. Um, they want to know what is the optimal time of the year to do the trail and how long will it take the average person to complete? Are there any resources along the way for a detailed trail map? And what is the best to do east to west or west to east? Really good questions. <laughs> Excellent questions. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, quick answers to those questions. The trail uh, is, will take to, to hike the whole thing. It's like the Bruce trail in that it, it, it goes in and out of, uh, communities in and out or way away from the road and reconnects with it. So you can do it as a section hiking or as a through hiker. Um, to through hike the trail will take between 21 and 28 days. Um, each, uh, each day you may be in a situation where uh, you're staying at a homestay. Uh, you might be camping. There would be some hotels along the way. We are underway as far as putting together a trail guide. When you go to Bhutan as an international traveler, um, you, um, the way that tourism is set up there, that you will have a guide. Uh, that's part of the package. When you go, when you visit Bhutan, you must have uh, somebody who goes with you, uh, travels with you, whatever you're doing there. So you would have a, a guide and, and we're hoping to engage local communities in that as well. Uh, and um, I think was it? Oh, did I miss one piece of it? Best time to come. Oh, best time. Best time to come. <laughs> Thank you, Sona. Never when's misses a trip. <laughs> <laughs> when's the best time to go to Bhutan, Sona? <laughs> you tell. Anytime. <laughs> Any so the, the, the spring or the fall are yeah. the best times. So, uh, yeah. so in the in the in the fall, kind of uh, any time is a good time to go to Bhutan. Frankly, I mean. Um, you know, but the, the, the spring and the fall, the spring, you'll get the rhododendrons, the fall, um, the days are warm, um, the nights are cooler, so it's great for sleeping. Um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the summertime, you get rain, and in the winter, it's you, just friggin' cold. You just don't like the leeches. I right? just don't like the leeches. I don't mm. know. Call me crazy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, spring and spring and fall are the most common times to go. But but the the nice thing about Bhutan is that it's it's a good place to go any time of the year. Okay, Hi. thank you all for your questions. I'm going to hand it back over to Lynn, Steve, Kathy, and Sonam. On behalf of the Arts Cultural Council, thank you for a wonderful presentation, and we wish you well as you carry on with this project. Thanks. Again. Thank you Thanks very so much. much. Yes, I got a, I got a little song to lead us out. Yeah, little song. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Steve. Oh, technologically. Anyway, yeah, yeah. There it okay, is. You ready? Tashi Dalek, everyone. Tashi Dalek. Have a wonderful yeah. evening. Dalek. Thank you, Lean and Hannah. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. I know it's very early where you are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sonam. We'll, we'll talk Thank soon. Thank you.